Let's talk about Cardano. No, let's talk about how you feel as an ADA investor. How much has the devastating condition in the crypto market taken its toll on you? Cardano ADA is deteriorating badly, and sadly, we don't have all the answers. We thought we were right about Cardano ADA. The volatile and unpredictable cryptocurrency has certainly made some bold and lucky investors rich, but it has caused some to lose a lot of money too. But that's the general nature of an industry that is fraught with uncertain regulations, outright scams, and the potential to upend entire industries. Cardano was created in late 2017 by Charles Hoskinson, who is one of Ethereum's co-founders. To an extent, many expected Cardano to be on the same pace as Ethereum because Hoskinson would have applied some strategies used for creating Ethereum for Cardano, but it was a different story. Cardano chose to become an innovative cryptocurrency that is often dubbed an Ethereum killer, and that's because Cardano tries to improve around the issue of scalability, which Ethereum lacked before the merge upgrade. Investors seem to appreciate this emphasis as Cardano produced a monster return of 1500% in the roughly 5 years it existed. Now, Cardano ADA is unique from other cryptos in that the development process can be characterized as slow and steady. Updates are researched thoroughly and peer-reviewed before being implemented, a process that adds time but can improve the blockchain's growth by making sure that mistakes are minimized. Generally, it's nice to see cryptocurrencies continue to find ways to improve their networks to gain greater adoption over time. And all of this activity bodes well for the future of Cardano. So where did we get it wrong? We have to understand it is too late to roll in a malaise of regrets and depression now. We can't take back what we said last year, and neither can the experts of crypto media do likewise. The right question to ask is, what is the way forward? Unfortunately, it does seem like there is no way forward. The SEC has recently classified Cardano 88 as a security, along with other cryptocurrencies. And things have gotten worse, so there's no hope for recovery. We are expecting a big catch though, but the stains and disadvantages surrounding Cardano are preventing many from seeing it. Since the beginning of the year, decentralized finance activity on Cardano has increased exponentially, with more traders using decentralized applications built on the blockchain. That's a catch. So far, evidence of Cardano's thriving DeFi sector is seen in the growth of its top 10 protocols. According to DeFi Llama data, these protocols recorded double-digit growth over the past month. In addition, Cardano recorded more than 1,000 Plutus V1 smart contracts in 2023, another indication of increased activity on the blockchain network. At the same time, the blockchain analytical firm Santiment pointed out that a significant amount of ADA was recently sold at a loss after investors profited. The firm noted that ADA mainly saw high sales at lower prices. Reports from Into the Block further showed that nearly 90% of all ADA holders are doing so at a loss. Now, while there might be several reasons for traders to sell at lower prices, the SEC's decision to label ADA as a security in June might have coaxed some traders. Although Charles Hoskinson and the Cardano Foundation have disputed this classification, it is clear that the labeling influenced market sentiments surrounding the asset. Also, the SEC's labeling merely expanded ADA's woes. The cryptocurrency price has been struggling for several months, reaching a two-year low of 23 cents after the authorities labeled it as a security. This simply explains why Cardano's TVL in dollars has remained below $200 million since peaking at $326 million in March of 2022, despite the continuous increase in ADA locked within the ecosystem. We are earnestly expecting the crypto bull market. At least, there would be a burst of release around here if a bull run happens. The largest cryptocurrency Bitcoin seems prepared for this run, and historically, its high performance can influence other coins which have a trudging for the king time, including Cardano ADA. However, our certainty seems divided. Things could get better, or they could get worse. There has been a recent report that has been hovering around the crypto market. Defunct crypto lender Celsius Network has requested court approval to convert all altcoin holdings to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Celsius declared the move in an updated reorganization plan filed on June 14th as part of its bankruptcy proceedings in the Southern District Court of New York. If the bankruptcy court approves this plan, then Celsius will begin converting all altcoins that are not designated for withhold or custody accounts, though it hasn't been confirmed whether this move has seen the light of day. According to the filing, the coins will be converted using commercially reasonable efforts to maximize value. If any parties are opposed to the plan, they must submit written objections to the court electronically. Interestingly, the Celsius Network Official Committee of Unsecured Creditors has already greenlit the plan. Meanwhile, borrowers who have collateral locked up in the defunct firm are worried they would lose out on their funds due to the new plan, which intends to give them so-called set-off treatment. Setting off the borrowers essentially allows Celsius to contradict the collateral it owes them. David Adler, who is a partner at McGarter and English LLP and representing a group of such Celsius borrowers, said the plan is a violation of every consumer lending law out there 
and he intends to disagree with it in court on behalf of his clients. According to Adler, Celsius filing the update indicates that the firm is trying to extend exclusivity to suggest the bankruptcy plan without proper justification, and he does not believe that such an extension is warranted. Now, about the SEC. Recently, Binance and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission reached an agreement to evade a full asset freeze of the platform in the U.S. to keep customers' assets in the United States, after a U.S. district judge signed off on the consent order. The agreement was reached amid a wide-ranging ongoing lawsuit filed by the SEC, which could take months if not years to resolve, charging the company with running an illegal securities exchange. The defendants, which include CEO Champagne Zhao, consented to repatriate assets held for the benefits of the U.S. customers. According to the consent order, the agreement makes sure that those assets are protected and remain in the United States to prevent them from moving offshore. Through 13 charges, we allege that Zhao and Binance entities engage in an extensive web of deception, conflict of interest, lack of discourse, and calculated evasion of the law, said SEC Chair Gary Gensler in a statement about the lawsuit. As a result, Binance Holdings officials, including Zhao, will not be able to have control over these assets per the agreement. The assets and funds explicitly cannot be transferred to them in the agreement ordered, and it will stay in domestic control. While these reports may try to choke out our expectations of the bull market, some good news might just brighten our moods. BlackRock ETF might be the real thing. Speculation that BlackRock will eventually break the US regulator's decade-long resistance to exchange-traded funds based on Bitcoin has fueled a rally in the token to its highest level in a year. Alas, something to finally be excited about. As expected, optimism among crypto traders has soared in the two weeks since the world's largest money manager applied to run the first publicly traded spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States, and Bitcoin has soared by a fifth to more than $30,000. BlackRock's application has revealed a group of considerable record of ETF approvals against the Securities and Exchange Commission, which has repeatedly rejected industry efforts for an ETF based on trading the underlying Bitcoin asset. Well, proponents argue that a cheap and regulated asset in the world's largest investment market would motivate more investors and hope the financial capacity of the asset manager will succeed where others have failed. Anyways, the SEC has three months to assess the application. The BlackRock ETF is likely to be approved, said Dave Weisberger, chief executive and co-founder of CoinRoutes, an algorithmic trading platform for the digital asset industry. BlackRock has pretty much undercut all the SEC's arguments other than, meh, we don't like Bitcoin, so I think they have a very reasonable chance, he added. Now, concerning the bull market, the chances are high. In a July 5th Ask Me Anything session on Twitter, Binance CEO Champagne Chow delivered his prediction for the Bitcoin bull market. He covered BlackRock's intentions to enter the crypto market, filled listeners in about ongoing regulatory action against the exchange, and equally gave his thoughts on the next bull run. CZ explained that Bitcoin price has historically moved in a four-year bull cycle, and his best bet would be that this would continue to occur. While he was right about his inability to accurately predict the future, Zhao emphasized the upcoming Bitcoin halving in 2024, and declared 2025 to be the most likely year for the next bull market, stating, the year after Bitcoin halving is usually the bull year. Signs of recovery are beaming, even though it remains unseen. Perhaps when it comes to crypto, seeing is not believing. But what are your thoughts though? That's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you click on the subscribe notification buttons, and we'll see you in the next video.